Hello everyone, today I'll be showcasing my Reaper build, or as I like to call it, the Purification Through Death build. <laughs> it's kind of cringy, but it sounds cool, so let's stick with that. And this is essentially my endgame build. It uses a switch glaive with the Izanagi and Susano graces. And yeah, so let's quickly show you my levels, just to show you the overview of the build. So I've got Constitution maxed out, obviously. You need as much health as you can get at higher difficulties. You don't want to get one shot by everything, even though I still do, to be honest. Courage at 200 and Magic at 150. Those are probably the most important ones. I only have Magic at 150, so I can have Ultimate Magic. I'll go into that later when I'm looking at the scrolls. I have Skill at 100 as well because my Sight scales a bit with Skill. So I'll show you that here. You see my Sight scales with Constitution, Skill and Courage. So I just started putting points of Skill just to get my damage as high as it could go, right? Uh, what I like to do is, because Courage also gives you Omnia Magic, I combined it with Magic itself so that I could get as much Omnia Magic power while also simultaneously making it a damage stat by putting Transform Bonus Courage on my weapon. That's probably the best way to do it. It's the same way for Skill and Dexterity. Skill gives you Ninjutsu power, so you want to combine it with Dexterity. That's just to optimize the build even more. But yeah, let's run through the gear that I have. So I chose Phoenix Wing as my primary weapon because it comes with Imbue Purity on it as a purple. And that probably means that you get more purity accumulation than if you tempered Imbue Purity on a random weapon. Because then it would be blue, right? So there's like a couple of points difference there. I don't know if it'll make a huge difference to how the build actually comes out at the end. But you might as well min-max it as much as you can, right? Uh, I normally put on Life Drain Melee Attack on all of my weapons. The attack bonus courage on all of my weapons. Final blow damage, I don't really know as well as you'll put on this slot, but it's nice, right? And then uh, purified accumulation. I'm pretty sure that melee damage versus whatever conflicts with the attack bonuses. And I don't really know which one would be better. I'm assuming that the flat 20% damage bonus would give you a high increase, but don't quote me on that. But either way, for max damage, you want one of the star effects, right? So you either want the uh, melee damage versus, or if the attack bonus had a star effect, it would go from A- minus to AA scaling at max familiarity. And that would give you even more damage, right? So that's probably what you want to go for. Yeah, so let me make clear that this build is nowhere near its highest damage output. Most of the gear I have is only 190, and even the enhancements levels only average at around 80, I'd say. And I think the highest you can go is 120. So just imagine the amount of damage I could have done. So in the montage, I would say just double my damage and that's what it would probably be if I had max level gear. But the point of this video is to show you the structure of the build, right? And if I really wanted, I could spend the next month grinding the underworld to get max level gear. But the underworld is boring as fuck and I refuse to do any more flaws. So yeah, this build is really simple. It consists of 7 piece Izanagi and 6 piece Susana. The core cool point of the purification build is the 30% extra melee damage against purified enemies alongside cleansing prayer. So at 3 stacks you get a 30% damage bonus alongside that so I guess that's like a 60% damage bonus in total right just on the Izanagi gear alone. So that's nice and then I've got Susano versatility stacks up high as well. I think the max damage you get from Susano at max stacks is like 60% maybe but it is high. The main advantage of the Switchglaive is that it can stack up Susana very easily compared to other weapons. If we look at the skill list, we see we see um, switching stances counts as active skills. So stacking Susana becomes easier because you can combo into different active skills together. And it feels really fluid, right? But you do still have to throw in random skills like uh, Empty Retribution or uh, Blinding Edge sometimes just to like facilitate the stacking and for other weapons what I've noticed is that to stack Susana is really hard because you can't really go into one active skill to another really fluidly so you normally need like two different weapons to stack Susana and make it feel good right but with the switch glaive it's very easy and it feels nice that's the whole point right of the switch glaive because you're switching stances while you're fighting so stacking Susana feels really good it doesn't feel like a chore so you see I'm doing like random combos like throwing up different like fucking combinations right and that that combination alone would have given me like four or five stacks. So for my offhand weapon I have a melee damage purified enemy star effect which is what I was saying I wanted on my main weapon. 
I'm pretty sure the offhand stats are still in effect even though you're not using the weapon. That's why I have this on. So that's just 15% extra damage. This axe, I don't, I don't ever use it. It's just there because this is the only melee damage uh, bonus against purified enemies that I actually have on any weapon. And I gave it Susano as well for versatility, right? So bow, not as special, got Izanagi and Susano and then you have to have these to make the full set. And now let's go into the armor. So, star effect on your magic, it's nice, not really that special though. What I'm aiming for is probably melee damage and active skill damage or key damage. And you see that's pretty much like on every single gear piece other than the waist guard. But even the waist guard has melee damage on skate, so that's pretty nice anyway. But yeah, none of this gear is optimal at all. I only have one star effect on like most of these pieces. The gloves don't even have any star effects, right? You want to get the best star effects that you possibly can get and save those gears and then inherit a grace onto them. I did not have the foresight to do that, unfortunately. So this is the gear I'm stuck with. But it's literally nothing special. Uh, yeah, you just want to make sure that the primary attribute of your gear piece is a good one. For example, Animal Charge on Strong Attack isn't really that good. I don't really ever use Strong Attacks. Dodge Key Consumption on Critical is whack as well. It's minus 6.5% is nothing. Literally nothing. It doesn't even matter. Projectile Damage Taken is nothing as well. Key Recovery Speed is alright. So like, you want stuff like that, right? You, you want either nothing or Key Recovery Speed or something along those lines. And then the, the accessories are probably where you're going to get the most benefits from. The armor and the bows don't really matter at all. You can temper whatever good effects you want on them. But the accessories, they matter. You have to have a set bonus requirement reduced, regardless of like what you want to try to do, because that's the only way you can get a 7 and a 6 piece set bonus. Slot on Omnia Magic Hit is fucking huge. It is amazing. I cannot even imagine playing the game without this anymore, because as you can see, I'm spamming Omnia Magic while I'm fighting these bosses anyway, just to generate more anima. And I'll go into more about that later. But th this would be way better if I had melee damage with purified enemies, right? The extra 20% damage for free. I only have a 5.8% melee damage increase. That's nothing compared to 20%. And I think you can also roll, like, simultaneously a melee damage versus zero key enemies. And that would probably be a god roll. But the chances of you actually getting that are nil. You're not going to get that unless you just get really lucky. I'm not going to get that because I'm an unlucky bastard. So that's just how it is. Now the next important piece is the scroll, okay? So I have this scroll because none of my scrolls of the damned are good enough to use for this build. The only reason I'm using this is because the ultimate magic. I just want my Omnia magic to last long enough to where I don't have to spam them. I hate having to reapply buffs just because I, I've gotten too used to uh, ultimate magic. So my buffs last forever essentially. But ideally, let me show you what I would ideally want. Right, you would want something like... Something like this, right? Active skill damage, Mystic Dad, Switch Glaive, and then Ultimate Magic, Ultimate Constitution, all of that. That's pretty much what you'd want. None of my scrolls are good enough. And maybe... Let me see. I mean, Path of the Beast, I'm pretty sure it's decent, right? So even Path of the Beast on the scroll would be a good one. But I'm not going to farm for a good fucking scroll of the damned. I cannot be bothered. The chance of me getting one are so low anyway. And you have to do the depths to do it. And I'm tired of the depths. I don't want to do the underworld anymore. So maybe you get lucky and you'll get a good one. And for the spells. Okay. So for the spells. I use Thunderstorm, Explosive Shot and Water Shot. Essentially what you want to find out is what the elemental weakness of your enemy is. Bosses don't really normally have one. It's, aside from like if you're fighting like Enera or Kasha. You obviously want to use Water Shots, right? Just because like you'll do more damage to them. But you're not even caring about the damage. You want the anima. Anima generation is the most important thing about this build because as you can see from the montage, Ippon Datra is very very OP. Let me see if I can summon like a decently strong enemy so you guys can see. A Yoki, there you go, why not. Oh shit, it came out straight away. So you hit him, sh lightning, hit him, hit him, and you keep spamming Ippon Datra, right? Like, OP as fuck. The fact that Ippon Datra st staggers bosses as well makes it so much stronger than any other active skill I'd say in the game. It's fast, you can throw it at the end of essentially any combo, right? You can see that I use it to cancel my animations, right? I'm doing retribution, cancel out of it so I don't get hit by an enemy, right? I also like to use it when I'm cancelling disability because you normally get stuck on 
the second swing here. So cancelling out of that is nice as well because it will let you stack up Susana for free. And then yeah, let's carry on with the other spells. These are just the normal buffs I use, so let me show you the names. So we've got a power pill. I don't really know how much damage this gives. I just use it because why not? I have the ninjutsu slots for it, right? Steel Talisman is great, increases your defense. Archiokai, you want anima generation. Every single build in this game revolves around anima generation. If you don't have anima generation, your build is not good. It's simple as that. Yokai abilities are so powerful, especially if you're integrating them into your own combos. They become so strong, honestly. Rejuvenation for healing. When you combine rejuvenation with the first stack of purity, the amount of healing you get is actually crazy. Like, you don't even ever have to heal during fights with elixirs because you genuinely have so much life recovery that you stay a bit further back, spam some magic, go in, use Ippon to stagger them. They can't hit you anyway, right? And that entire time, you're just getting all your health back. So we've got a barrier talisman. This is probably the most important talisman I have here. This is one of the strongest Omnia magics in the game. Being able to dispel yokai pools by just walking over them is way better than you think it would be. Like when I read this shit on paper, I was like, who cares? I can just keep us to dispel the yokai realm anyway, right? But this shit is so oh my god, I can't play the game without it. Just because I've gotten so used to just running everywhere and never having to worry about yokai realms. The thing is it synergizes as well with uh, purity anyway, right? Because you're gonna be purifying little yokai realms while just running around. For an enemy like an Isumade, they become completely useless against you because you're purifying every single yokai realm. They can't blow anything up. Tiger running scrolls for when I die and I want to run back to where I'm going. Or if I want to skip through ads so they don't chase me. Because if you run fast enough, they'll stop. But yeah, those are the spells. The main point of these spells is, like I was saying earlier, is to generate anima. That's pretty much it. Alright, so obviously I'm using Ho-Oh. Why would you not? It's a purity build. But this is where things get interesting, right? Let's look at the soul cores. White Tiger has to happen. You see it's not upgraded, right? I don't really care if it's upgraded or not, to be honest. It's just I don't want to farm White Tiger soul cores so that I can max it out. If you wanted to min-max your build, you would probably have to farm White Tiger soul cores. And I think you can do it in the 40th Underworld zone, if I'm not mistaken. I might have to check that again and I'll put it on the screen if it's not the 40th. But it's either that or you're going to have to find a scroll of the damned and farm on there. So you see I have a white tiger one here, right? So maybe I will just kill it a couple times. But yeah. The animal bonus on enemy purification is essentially why you want this. This way your build isn't completely reliant on Omnia magic for anima generation. For example, some buffs like Atakamaru, for example. Uh, they can like recover from debuffs very fast. So you're going to be able to keep um, inflicting purity on them over and over again. And that's going to keep giving you anima, right? And then we've got Ipondatara. Amazing. If you do not use Ipondatara, use it. It is the best active skill in the game. It is actually so clean, honestly. I don't even care if you have good stats on it. I got lucky and I ended up with pretty decent stats, right? Like, I don't give a fuck about Amrita bonus. And I don't give a fuck about the super efficient yokai abilities. But that 14% extra yokai ability damage is actually nice. Especially when I'm using Ryom and Sukuna. Now you'll be asking why, it's a purity build. Look at the anima bonus on Omnia Magic hit. This shit is so clean because all I have to do is throw a little fireball at an enemy and I get half of my anima back. And this is a decent roll as well because I end up getting made damage with scorched enemies and attack bonus as well. Ryoma Sukuna and Ippon Datara combined together are the best of both worlds. Let me see if I can actually summon like multiple adds. Right? So look. Ipondatra is a single target ability, right? Oh, she added a lot of damage. Ipondatra is a single target ability. Whereas Ryo and Sukuna hits everything. It's a fucking Beyblade, right? You see how insane that is? You use Ipondatra for single enemy key damage and Ryo and Sukuna for AoE damage or even straight up single target damage if the enemy has zero key. And that's important because you don't want to get hit whilst you're spinning. And the Ryoman Sukuna does do more damage than Impon Datara, so it is good to switch between them every now and then. But yeah, these these are probably the best soul calls I could like combination I could find for this build. I would not ever substitute any single one of these pieces for another one. I, I guess I can show you my switch glaive abilities. Essentially, I just got everything maxed out. When you're running a Susano build, you want to have all the active skills available to you, so you can decide which ones are good for you. 
and that way you can stack up son of the most efficient way for yourself because you might like an ability that i don't like for example where's this ability yeah this one where you hold r in a circle i never use this i literally do not ever use this but you can use it and it would be good to use this to stack susano i don't know why the fuck it cancels an ei ability that's kind of weird but yeah So you see I'm buffing everything, I'm not going, let's go. We got some Omnia Mages, that's fine. So we've got three stacks of Susana already, that's fine, it's gonna be way more in a second. So you see we cancel out of that switch glaive ability with Ipandatara. So we see he really has 7 stacks of Sasana and I haven't even done anything, right? I'm gonna stop stacking it for now, just so when the boss comes, I can um, have my 9 stacks. The damage is crazy. You can see, I don't even have my 3rd stack of purity, right, right? So you can see that shit. That's a Kiriaki, interesting. Bang, completely killed his key, and we're gonna spin. You see, nothing's ever going to be a challenge. The only downside I would say for this build is the fact that you have such little health. Like, you see, like, normal enemies do so much damage to me, man. But as long as I'm playing decent, I shouldn't even die. I don't even need to heal. You can see my passive life recovery has already got me to full HP. The White Tiger's here now. And we're just spamming at this point. Ow. He did that shit again. It's probably the worst uh, boss to actually fight with a purity build, you know, because I don't think you can purify them, right? <laughs> but yeah, I'm just gonna use magic, get my anima back, just start spamming Ipandatra kicks, and just spin to win. OP as fuck. See what I mean? You see what I mean? This shit is crazy. I mean, I guess that's it. I don't really know what else to showcase. When you use this build, I hope you get as much joy out of it as I do. The Switchglaive is by far my favorite weapon in the game, just because you can combo um, into your different stances. It gives you so many more options during combat, right? You can use that for a dive and then go into this for a little backup. Oh, it's, it's, too, it's too much. It's too clean. I could even go over like switch glaive techniques like on some other video but yeah if you enjoyed the video leave a like and comment and if you want to see more videos like this in the future please subscribe i will definitely make another build video because this was fun i ain't gonna lie this was really fun all right peace